have start us all again. I feel oh. like an idiot, but there we go. Um, no, don't, don't feel bad. Folks, you just missed four min minutes of the most scintillating conversation you ever had because I forgot to hit the wrong button. And there <laughs> we go. I to double check that. Um, for those of you expecting Matt Yankovic, he's on his way to the Southeast Linux Fest today. So you're stuck with me, a very poor second choice, but you have the great Marcus Alpe, who's going to run through everything you need to do, need to know about setting up backups and scheduling regular MySQL backups. So now yep. that all the stumbles out of the way, we're ready to go. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm going to be showing you one of Percona's uh, flagship products. Uh, I think uh, this is one of the things that uh, has attracted many people to Percona, uh, and it's extra backup. Uh, which is a binary hot backup solution with a host of features, right? Uh, parallel backups, encryption, streaming, compression. So, you know, it's a really featureful uh, tool uh, and you can build a complete solution. This is not a solution to take backups yet. We are building a solution and I'm going to show you some of it. Um, sadly, I failed to properly set up a fake S3 server on my machine. Uh, so I won't be able to fully showcase that solution. Uh, but again, extra backup is a tool around which you build your own solution. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to take incremental backups. Um, and we're also going to be seeing a few other things, namely, um, well, uh, how to bring a backup up to date. So you, you uh, produce the backup and, you know, two days later, you want to restore the backup. You don't want to lose all those two days worth of data rights or, or updates. So you need to bring your backup up to date. Uh, the other one is testing backups. Uh, having a backup and not testing it is just having a large collection of bytes that, you know, might mean nothing. They might be unusable. So uh, actually testing backups is a critical step. It's something you cannot uh, avoid. Like if you avoid uh, testing backups, you don't have backups. You just have a large collection of files. So do test your backups. Uh, and the other one is monitoring. Uh, monitoring backups can tell us a lot uh, about what's uh, going on uh, in our system. And if we are about to uh, run out of backups, right? Like, are my backups working and, and can I actually rely on them? That's an, a question you actually won't answer. Um, so I, um, I I will start also, uh, I, I will, I will um, talk just very briefly. There are other type of backups, right? Like we have uh, logical backups, um, we have snapshot backups, and we have delayed replica backups and they all serve different purposes i don't see these as mutually exclusive rather many times they are complementary and we're going to see that logical backups are my favorite way to test a physical backup so this is uh, again uh, uh, um, not not an option like which one i have to do rather how i want to combine them to uh, you know, have a successful backup strategy that will always allow me to achieve my uh, recovery point objective, which is, you know, how much data can I afford to lose and always to achieve my recovery time objective, which is how fast can I recover from this? Um, so, all right. Um, uh, I, I said that extra backup is physical backup. Then there is logical backup for which uh, I would normally use my SQL uh, dump uh, or my dumper. Uh, but if we get to the time today, I'm going to be showcasing um, my SQL shell uh, utils dumper, which is a, a new, um, relatively new uh, utility. It has parallel dump and restore, which is super nice. Uh, and it's integrated into my SQL shell. So it's quite nice and I believe developers are going to enjoy it thoroughly because it does have a JavaScript and a Python interface. So easy to script, easy to integrate into your workflow. Um, so yeah, uh, 
we're going to be taking a look at that. And again, we're also going to be considering what is a delayed replica. A delayed replica is just a replication and a synchronous replication setup uh, that you keep purposefully delayed so that uh, if you do a drop table or if you do uh, an update without a work condition, you will have a very fast way to restore because you just have to stop the replica and bring it up to the point where you did the bad action, skip the bad action, and then uh, apply the following uh, events and you're running, right? And you didn't even have to restore a backup. The backup was already there running. So it's a very nice method. We, we might also try to get that done. But let's start by sharing my screen. And how do I share a window here? And here we have it. Uh, just a second. Share. Uh, my sharing? Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Yay. OK, um, here we have uh, in famous Marcos DB. Uh, it has uh, MySQL D running somewhere. There you go. And this MySQL D uh, has uh, the movie JSON test uh, that our dear Matt left for me. So extra backup. Uh, I installed, uh, I'm running MySQL 8.0, uh, Percona Server 8.0. So with uh, 8.0 series, it's very important that you match the minor version of your Percona Server or your MySQL with the minor version of extra backup because uh, Oracle uh, is doing continuous integration in 8.0, meaning that major features and backwards incompatible features are introduced in minor releases. And this means that, for example, the redo log format has changed at least three times through the last couple of uh, months, years uh, on 8.0. Um, and so uh, because extra backup relies on the redo log uh, for consistency, the change of format will actually make it incompatible in between versions. So very important to have a matching version. So in my Rocky Linux, I will do yum search show duplicates extra backup. And I'm going to grab f for a zero And there you go. Very easy. Uh, oops, there is a duplicate package. Who cares? Yeah, I'm installed. I already have it installed. I'm just going to uh, repeat the process. But basically, uh, again, the important bit is make sure your backup version matches your MySQL version. OK? That, that is the critical part. I'm going to make this font a bit larger. Is I'm not sure if that's OK, Dave. If you can mm -hmm. It works. Tell me if it works. OK, great. Um, so yeah, install. Uh, of course, it's better if you do it like root. Um, package it's already installed, of course. Um, and then this will give you the extra backup binary. Uh, so you can actually. Uh, see there, it's already running, and we got the right version. Amazing. So with that, um, you will want to set up. There are a few options. Today, I'm going to just uh, make it a simple demonstration with a local storage. But uh, I'm also going to very quickly showcase how you can send it to a remote server, uh, which is usually desirable because you know you don't want your backups to live in the same machine you're trying to save because the whole machine could go to hell mm -hmm. so it rather keep the backups the backups off uh, off band right um, you can you can do that by r syncing the resulting backup in the local storage or you can directly stream the backup into the remote storage um, so with that uh, I, was, I told you I was going to share what I do for 
um, organizing my folders. So what I will do is date plus the year uh, plus the uh, week, which is you. I took notes because I have it in my script. I'm sorry. I never remember this stuff top of my head. So it goes like this. Uh, G and then V. Um, that's the year. And then uh, V is the week. So uh, we are now at week 23. And then we have the day of the week. So I would normally start my backups on Sunday. I would say, OK, Sunday, which is for so much people, a low traffic day. Other people, it's, it's crazy day, I know, for gaming companies and perhaps some retail companies, it's going to be crazy day on Sunday. So this might not apply to everybody, but many, many people on uh, Sunday's quiet day. So um, Sunday is day zero. It will be day zero. And I will start day. And I will call, I will call that full. So what I will do is mkd-p. Uh, well, Backups, uh, date uh, plus G D full, and I will do this on a month on a Sunday, um, and there you go, and then I will, I believe I already tested just to make sure everything was working. No. OK, that's great. Um, so what I will do now is take a full backup. So uh, I will do uh, time just to uh, measure how long. This is also a good idea when you're taking backups. Uh, measure how long they take. You can do this with time, or you can set a, a counter for time at 0 when you start, and then take the time when you finish and calculate the delta, uh, whatever. But it's important to have timing about your backups. Uh, that helps you uh, estimate recovery times. It helps you estimate operations in the future when you're taking backups for uh, providing replicas, to provide a developer with a testing environment or you know whatever. Backups are very important operative uh, assets. And it's good to know how long they take. Um, so I will do time extra backup. I'm going to use a default file that contains my user password. So I don't type them in the clear. Uh, these are in home. Uh, Rocky, uh, my CNF. Yes, sir. There they are. Um, and I'm going to say backup. I want to do parallel um, equal four threads. You know, I'm just going to like how many CPUs? How many CPUs? So I have eight CPUs. So yeah, four threads is quite good. And I'm going to say compress. Um, and compress threads equals four as well. And target in is going to be uh, mount backups and again year week uh, and I, I'm gonna you know pretend we are on Sunday uh, we are obviously not but I'm just gonna pretend and that's it this is gonna produce uh, backup usually uh, of course you have to be root so Extra backup, and let me tell you a bit about how extra backup works, because, of course, it's it's interesting to know. Um, basically, extra backup requires direct access to the file system. So you cannot run extra backup remotely. Uh, you can access the node remotely through SSH and trigger the backup remotely, but you cannot run extra backup on one machine to, call, to back up the files of another machine. So uh, extra backup requires direct file system access. That's uh, and um, the user that I was uh, trying to use 
did not have uh, op um, permissions by the operating system to access those files. Um, so I got banned. Uh, and the other part, extra backup will start copying the files from the file system. And as it copies the files, it's also going to keep a copy of all the events in the redo log. So basically, it's going to uh, keep a huge redo log uh, stream for all the duration of the backup. And so when you finish, uh, you have a crashed data set. Like the data files you have will look as a crashed to MySQL. You know, if you started that instance, uh, MySQL would say these data files are crashed. Like you, you plug, you pull it out the plug while this instance was running. That's how they're gonna look for MySQL. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with the redo log, we can do the crash recovery and bring that copy of the files in sync and and make them usable and. That, that's how extra backup works, basically. You get a copy of the files that is not workable, and you get a copy of the redo log that will make them workable. So we're going to see how this works. Anyway. So now, yeah, uh, with sudo, I uh, start my backup. It's going to take about a minute. I'm just going to do my Uruguayan stuff and drink some mate, if you don't want. <laughs> So extra extra backup is really, really great um, because in newer versions, uh, if you're not doing any uh, alter table, drop table, truncate table, uh, you know, that kind of uh, data definition operations, then uh, it's basically non-blocking. You know, it's, it's not going to cause any locks. Uh, just very, very briefly for, um, well, in 8.0, it's not going to cause any lock. In 5.7, there are still some MyISAM files, and those will require uh, you to um, uh, to actually uh, lock the server to have a consistent copy of those. But otherwise, you know, uh, here the guy did uh, flash no right to binary logs. No, where is it? Uh, look, look for backup somewhere. It must have done look for backup. Uh, I cannot see it, but you can see it does unlock tables. It's because it actually uh, lock it for backup, which is uh, just locking the metadata and not the table itself. So you can operate on them. You can just not do alter table, drop table, etc. All right, and if I look at my backups here, I have a uh, backup. It's full of these QP files. Uh, that is Cupress, uh, because somewhere there must be a Cupress installed. Oh, oh no, we have it built in, actually. Now. So uh, with Cupress, uh, th this is the Cupress extension, I mean. And what we're going to do now, if we wanted to use that backup, is um, We'll do sudo extra backup. Extra. So this. Backup. Uh, decompress target B equals one. Blah, blah, blah. What you don't like? Cupress uh, command not found. Okay, so it's not built in. Yeah, let's go Cupress. Sure. Uh, this is coming from uh, our tools repo, I guess, or from a pill. But if, if you don't find it in your, if, if you do yam install and it doesn't work for you, uh, it, it's for sure in the epel repo. Uh, so um, with that install, we're going to be able to run the compress. Again, it's going to take uh, some time. It's Oops, not a bad idea to also do this, um, to do time, you know, so you can actually get a timing estimate for your operations. It's good to learn about how long it takes on your site. Like, I can give you a time estimate. It's 90% of the time it's going to be inaccurate because of disk, CPU, RAM, 
uh, you know, compress how, how much can the files get compressed. So everything counts and it, it's really hard to give time estimates. So it's best to learn about your uh, timings through a bit of experience, experimentation and just using time, it's enough and very simple. So I'm gonna um, restore this backup. Um, and I'm gonna show you a very nice trick. Let me find my snippets. Uh, start instance, there you go. So, Okay, uh, now it got a lot of uh, QP files that you can remove. I forgot there is another switch to remove the files as you decompress. I completely forgot which one is this. I have all that scripted, so I don't remember the manual to be honest. But it's very easy. There you go, that was easy. Um, so there you have a backup. This backup is not usable. This backup, as it is right now, it's in a crashed state, like we said before. It, it's uh, waiting to be prepared. And um, I can tell that because I see this extra backup log file, uh, meaning uh, that the redo log extra backup captured, which is uh, stored here, has not been yet been applied to this dataset. So I'm gonna again gonna do extra what's wrong with you? Okay. Uh, extra backup uh, prepare target deal. And I'm going to do uh, nothing else. This is basic. Um, again, this is going to bring the backup into a steady state. Instead of being into in a crushed state, it's going to be in a healthy state. It's going to be uh, as if you had cleanly shut down the database before copying the files. Uh, and we can see here you can see it. it's telling us oh the database was not shut down normally and you know extra backup it's uh, uh it's based on the same InnoDB libraries we use inside mysql uh, so you're going to see a lot of the same messages here and it does the crash recovery it goes through it uh and it applies the redo log, then applies the undo log. And with that, it uh, completes the crash recovery. Now, this thing is uh, usable. And I can tell, uh, because while I see the log file here, I also see the IB log files here. Uh, and those are the redo logs that were produced after the crash recovery. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an auxiliary directory and I'm just going to, uh, let me see, I hope this is all it. So I'm going to start my SQL um, with that data directory. Um, and I'm just going to, the rest is going to be all fake, port 33, and then the error log in the auxiliary, then the socket and pit file. So with this simple command, you can start an instance and bring up this uh, data set. You could also, of course, add, uh, I don't know, um, what can we add? We can uh, add be in the B log. Equals to G because that's what I see here, and we need to be equals G just to have some buffer pool. Um, okay, and if that worked, I should be able to do this default 
uh, home will be YCF four two three by nine. Uh, there you go. It works. So you can see I'm, I'm connected to a different port. Uh, so I could also connect to 3306 and we'll still have my, my instance. So why is the so normally you will do this in the same uh, instance in the same server host where you're running your production. You will have streamed this to a remote server, and then you can start the backup like this to make sure the backup actually works. And more importantly, you can do this. Uh, let's see, we'll show, yeah, H B. Now this. Hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put my password on the screen. Don't tell this to David Busby. Okay. Please don't copy that. Oh, this is the password you only use on this machine for this purpose. So there's no correlation between this and anything like a checking account or. or yeah, exactly. No, that it's just my my secondary bank account, but it's fine. You you can take note. Uh, I hope that works actually. Yeah, that I figured my SQL shell didn't know about the false file. Dash U root dash B. Please don't copy this. Bang, bang, bang. There you go. And what you will do is util dot uh, damp instance. And very easy. Again, I am connected through to the uh, backup I restore. If I'm able to complete a logical backup, that means every clustered key within InnoDB is in good shape. So I can rely on this backup. This backup is good and holy, uh, and whole, sorry, <laughs> good and whole. And, and you can rely that this backup will be uh, restorable next time. And you don't like, you don't have to run the prepare uh, next time you're going to uh, use it. So that's a, a very big uh, plus because today the prepare uh, was very short uh, because I had no traffic on the instance. But on an instance with heavy traffic, uh, you will actually um, suffer some weight uh, when doing the um, the the prepare step because it has to do crash recovery and if you had a lot of writes while taking the backup crash recovery is going to take quite a while um, so uh, having a prepared backup and uh, testing the backup is going to speed up recovery and is going to guarantee recovery so looks sounds like kind of important um, so here, that instance, you just uh, pass the directory you want. I forgot to do this. Want backups uh, of the logical, and then I want to do data plus percent g percent d percent. Uh, well, in this case, it's full. Um, I think that's all. Of course, there you go. And I want to send it to util dump instance. And I want to send it mount perhaps logical. 22, 23. Yeah, I think that's okay. And beautiful. And it even gives you progress and whatnot. So it's nicer than my single dump, right? Uh, and again, it's the doing multi thread dumping. In this case, there's a huge table. So that one table is probably blocking everything. 
and the other threads are just idle. Um, do -do -do. I like how it changes the speed according to which table is taking the backup, right? If it's a, it's, if it's a wide row, it's not going to be able to do as many rows per second. And if it's like a small rows, then it can do 600K per second. Wow. So not all tables are made the same, you can tell, right? Like it was dumping near 600K, now it's doing 10K. Um, this probably has JSON columns. And then that's how it, it gets to be that slow. <clears throat> Then real that JSON would slow down the backups. <laughs> you love JSON. You should know this. <laughs> well, I, I really have not really considered it from the backup side before. You have something to add to that, Luke. <laughs> well, um, when you think about being a binary blog, I can see why it slows it down. But I, I never, it had never occurred to me before this. Now, Fair enough. Fair enough. now, what's interesting to me is the relative speed between the two of these, between extra backup and the uh, util uh, dump instance. Yeah, I did not time it this. I, I gave you that advice, but I forgot to time it because I was sure this guy was going to give us the total time. I am not now not so sure. I recall that it gave us like the progress. So, you know, I assume that timing will be there, but doesn't look like it. Uh, maybe at the end. Uh, could be. Because I know extra backup is just amazingly fast uh, compared to, uh, you know, uh, MySQL dump or enterprise inter MySQL backup. Hmm. Um, okay, here's the deal. That is not necessarily always true. While, yes, many times it's going to be faster. And look, it, it's to, it gave us the time. That's great. Uh, so it's about, it took double the time to dump. But imagine you have uh, more indexes than data, which is not uncommon. You know, many people um, insist on doing their analytic uh, queries on their transactional database, and they over-index things. They create dozens of covering indexes or, or just dozens of indexes. So you could end up with more indexes than data. And in the logical dump, you don't get the uh, in the secondary indexes. So it's going to be smaller. That is always for sure. But it might also be faster. Again, also imagine you have a very big IB data one because you know you had some uh, undo log growth for a long transaction or whatever or uh, that you have a lot of fragmentation, like you have some tables that grew into the hundreds of gigabytes, you know, and then you do a delete of half that table. That table is still going to be 100 gigabytes. So my single dump is only going to dump the whatever amount of gigabytes for the data that is left. Extra backup is going to copy the 100 gigabytes. So. In that sense, uh, it's not always true that um, producing the backup is going to be faster with extra backup. What it's always, almost always going to be true is that restoring the backup with extra backup is faster. Because then you don't have to run the insert statements again, and you don't have to create the secondary indexes again. Um, and if you, and, and you, are a good guy and you already prepare your backup ahead of time instead of waiting until the day of the disaster to test your backup. So because you're a good guy, you don't have to wait for the prepare time either. So restoring that backup is going to be much faster. Yes. Very cool. Producing it, not always true, but uh, restoring, always true. OK, well, I'd so I'd rather have a complete and correct backup well, that takes a little bit longer than to have one that kind of leaves something out that you don't find out till after you you're restore the data. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, Benjamin Franklin said there are three things certain in life, uh, death, taxes, and data corruption. Uh, so <laughs> he was ahead of his time in more than one way. <laughs> in, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, uh, no, it, it's just uh, unthinkable to not test your backups. Really, it, it's not a backup procedure unless the procedure includes testing. Um, this uh, was all the testing that was necessary. This is all you need to do, right? It's like just do a logical backup. Restore your instance somewhere else. Uh, you know, copy the instance to a, a remote destination with a single uh, command. You know, I, I just created one directory and with a single command, I brought up that backup uh, after preparing and I was able to verify uh, that it's fully usable. Now I know this backup is good. Now I can tell the data in this backup is always going to be accessible. Uh, and, you know, we can go to sleep. And if disaster strikes tomorrow, then we are OK. Um, and we are OK because I also have binary logs enabled, which is the second piece of let's bring things up to date. Uh, but before we go into binary logs, I'm going to show you incremental backups. Um, so I took a full backup and I fully prepared it. So I'm going to have to wipe out this one uh, because for incrementals, you cannot have uh, fully prepared backups. This is kind of a pain in the neck, uh, but we're going to see, like, again, I will tell you what I will do. Like, I will go this route, uh, you know, to have certainty. And to me, after enough years, dealing with disasters from hundreds of customers, I can tell you certainty is invaluable. It's like having absolute trust in your backups. It's really something that is priceless. It's, it's so beautiful that the day things go wrong, you can be uh, adamant on, you know, we're going to get out of this because I have good backups. So it will take a bit more work but it's uh, totally worth it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the uh, fake remote. Uh, so fake remote is just I'm going to pretend this is somewhere else, OK? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to make the uh, fake remote uh, backups. I'm going to do fake remote. Backups. Amount of disk space I'm going to propose using might be obscene for some people. Uh, again, it all depends on how much guarantees you want for your backups. And if you have uh, incremental, if you want to do incremental backups, things do get a bit more complicated. So let's see how this goes. Basically, what I'm going to do is um, set up screen dash is perhaps. I'm going to start the screen. I don't use Tmax. All right. Now, you're okay. eventually doing a full backup on a Sunday. Um, do you do incrementals for the rest of the week, or is it like the right, that that Right, that will be, you know, I see people doing incrementals twice a day. So it's also OK. Like, okay. I, I don't see anything that uh, is, you know, um, there is this thing where Taking incrementals, like if you have a very busy database, like a very busy database, and you have a huge data set. The other day, I got some guy with 10, ter 10 terabytes or 23 terabytes, you know, like massive yeah. data set. Uh, he was taking a backup with extra backup. And um, he was uh, never able to, uh, to keep up with, the, while he was preparing, uh, the bin logs will run away. You know, he had uh, perhaps a too short uh, bin log retention because uh, the uh, DML volume, like the, the amount of insert delete updates going on there was huge. So uh, he couldn't have 
eternal retention for the bean logs. And in the end, what he did was took a backup, then prepared the backup, um, and then started taking incrementals. You know, and the incrementals you can always take because they are just based on LSN. And the LSN is recorded on the files. And so we can always go back to that LSN. And you take incrementals, and the incrementals take shorter time to prepare. So in the end, he was able to, you know, have a, a backup that was working and that was close enough to the bin logs. So it, 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 there's nothing wrong like with taking multiple incremental backups. Of course, uh, uh, reading uh, and scanning to look up changed uh, pages and everything, it does have some uh, impact on performance. Like there is nothing free. Uh, when, when you're doing operations in the database, they're never free, never. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to put some uh, extra, uh, some load on the database, but it shouldn't be like horrible. Um, so yeah, I, I will do it once per day, but again, you can do it more than once per day. And that is the beauty of doing week uh, day number, right? And mm -hmm. that, that will give you like very easy to to find like oh I want to go to last week uh, you know and to Thursday uh, and it's easy to just locate the backups and to do calculations you know you just add one plus one plus minus one and and you can find uh, weeks back and, and days back so uh, um, I don't have a screen anyway I'll just connect again to to this let me duplicate this stuff. Chup, chup. Rocky. Let me find the should be somewhere there. There you are. So don't take out apps. So I'm gonna do my uh, directory for the day. Eight plus G B, and I'm gonna say it's full because I, I'm in an imaginary Sunday. Uh, what you don't like? Oh, percent no plus. Um, so I have the full. I'm gonna go here to have uh, NC. So I use Netcat. You can use SoCat or whatever else. I just don't remember SoCat top of my head. I have it somewhere written down, but I do remember Netcat. So I'm gonna say Netcat. Uh, listen on 9999 so please open a port uh 9999 on li and listen for income streaming there and then whatever comes through that port um just send it to um uh right here so it's xp stream dash c xp stream c i I'm pretty sure. Just let me take a look at my notes. Just one second. Yeah. Dash X. I was forgetting something. See, and it's going to be here. So I set up the listener and uh, oops, and then uh, let me make this font somewhat larger. So netcat listened on this port and whatever comes on this port, pipe it to XP stream, which is going to extract 
and it's gonna uh, output on this directory. Um, so with that, I can repeat my uh, extra backup. Come on, I know you're here somewhere. I don't want that all that stuff anymore. I'm lazy. Okay, I'll type it again. Who cares? Uh, extra. Oh, okay, no, no. There you go. So I'm just gonna say target deer uh, slash TMP, and that target deer in this. Time is just going to store um, the temporary files, the, the files that um, cannot be streamed live because we're writing to them uh, while the backup is happening. Namely, the file that we want that is going to be stored here is the extra backup log file, uh, which is going to be copied once the backup is finished. So, target there. And then I'm going to say we're going to stream it. Stream equals XP stream um, the pipe. I'm going to say netcat to into seven zero zero one point nine nine. Is it with? Uh, I never remember. Yeah, it's just like this. So backup uh, sudo because otherwise it's not going to work. All right, here it goes. And in this side, you won't see anything. But if we actually um, There you go. So you can see it's growing, right? Okay, and mm -hmm. there it is. It's here. weird how it grows and goes up and down, but basically you can uh, see that it's... Uh, I wonder why it goes up and down so drastically. But again, it's copying files. Uh, it's just going to take time. Perhaps I'll really finish it. There you go. So we got our uh, first backup. Um, we are going to copy a file from this backup, um, with, which is the checkpoints file. So this is one file you're going to have to bring back from the remote destination. And uh, you're going to see it's in uncompressed. And it's good that it's uncompressed because, oops, that. that guy is telling us the LSN uh, for the backup. We, we should do some, let's do something. Uh, some rows. Um, so 
I added some rows because I want the logical sequence number to advance. So we're going to have something to increment the backup in, in the back. Um, so, um, you know, normally you, you will have to automate the copy of this file. Uh, I'm just going to copy to don't. Uh, this will be my local backups and I will copy, uh, sorry. That as 2023. Oh, I wrote. Okay. Um, so we. Mm -hmm. Boo, no. Good job. Um, so extra backup. It's LSND. Extra LSND. Oh, well, I forgot. You can actually, um, when you're doing the backup, you could actually save it in a next, like keep it somewhere else. Uh, so, um, so. What do you mean? Oh, okay, because I'm going to put pool is going to be that. Okay, so what you do is extra backup, you backup, and then you do uh, parallel, or we want parallel. Or compress and do target d equals uh, slash temp, um, and then you do. Oh, I rather always take notes. This is why you take notes. You do incremental base d. That is the thing. Incremental is the mount backups and this is where you have that file extra backup checkpoints uh, and screen uh, stream uh, equal XP stream and I have to set up the listener again I'm just gonna MKD 2022, you will do, you know, this will be on Monday, which is uh, day number one. So mm -hmm. you will have like that and you will go there and you will do the same and set up the listener. So we will set up stream here. Back up, parallel. Yeah. And I'm just going to add compress threads. Compress threads and again, this is the uh, key part. Um, when, when you have, uh, when you're starting an incremental, you you want to point uh, incremental base deal to a directory that contains the uh, LSN. So, you know, actually, and when you're doing the backup, I forgot about this, to be honest. Um, you don't have to copy back. Like, you can just simply use this flag that is going to keep an extra copy of extra backup checkpoints locally. So you don't have to copy back. That, that It was made precisely for that. Originally, that didn't exist. Like, when, when incremental backups came out, that didn't exist. Uh, what you don't like? What did I do wrong? Ah. Uh, Defaults, defaults, file, call, and, oh, of course, when it went to start uh, streaming, my pipe was broken because the previous attempt of the backup failed. So, I need to open the pipe again. You will see there's nothing here. 
So I open the pipe again and I do the thing again. And this time it's working. Um, so again, this guy is going to start at, uh, let's see where it's telling us somewhere. It's going to tell us uh, I started at LSN X. That's weird. I don't see it. Where is it? Hmm. Perhaps it's, it will only give it us at the very end. We'll see in a minute. Okay, um, so we can go here. And if we do extra backup. Okay, there you are. Uh, it's <laughs> the other way. So two LSN here, and you can see two LSN is the same as from LSN here, right? The, the full backup has from LSN zero, and the incremental backup has from LSN matching the last two LSN of the full backup. So, you know, if I have uh, been smart and I would have kept my extra backup checkpoints on the other side, I wouldn't have to uh, go around uh, lagging files. Um, back and forth but i'll correct it next time <laughs> this is my local machine right like um, no i'm in the wrong directory uh -huh. 20, 20, i'm just gonna copy from I hope I didn't delete the wrong files. We're gonna find that very soon. Uh, there you go. Um, just let me verify something very quickly. Okay, I didn't delete the files. That is super good. Um, so I'm going to take another incremental backup. I'm just going to add more rows. Yes, it will. Uh, is the best. Okay, there we have many more rows. More, 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 more. All right. So, um, oops. More rows. Now we have a bunch of rows. Um, and I'm going to do the right thing this time. I'm going to create locally uh, mount backups 22232. So today is Tuesday. Um, so today is Tuesday, and what we're going to do is um, uh that silly thing i've been forgetting incremental base deal is going to be one because again i want to point the incremental base deal to the directory that contains the extra backup checkpoints file for the last backup from where i want to take the delta if i point this again to full I'm going to take a delta that is, is also going to contain uh, the things from Monday and not only the things between Monday and Tuesday. It's, it's going to contain the whole of Monday and whole of Tuesday. Does that make sense? It's, it's like, I'm not sure if my explanation is, is um, clear enough, but basically, uh, w because we have, let me find those. Perhaps. Um, 
this. So, uh, um, is that in something? That was, obviously, yes. So, again, if I point again to full, it will start again from this LSN. Mm -hmm. And actually, we want to start from this other LSN because we already have an, an incremental that covers this range. So I want to point to this other checkpoint file. So it's going to start at this point. Hope that makes more sense now. Yeah. Um, so I'm uh, moving, I, I copied again, the uh, LSN, the extra backup checkpoints here. And I'm actually gonna stop doing the silly stuff. Uh, I created a local directory, not in the remote, but in the local. And I'm going to say extra lsn equals la la la. And it's going to keep a copy of the checkpoints for me in there. And this should all be ready to go. No, of no. course, because we need to uh, create uh, the listener on this side. Uh, here I'm on the fake remote, uh, right here, 22, 23, 2, no, uh, yeah, 2, 1, 2. And we did 22, 23, 2, go, and I cut. There you go, that works. Hopefully, oh. this extra Ellison. Okay. That's why I never try to remember variables. <laughs> so it's a streaming uh, again. It it's using, and we're gonna verify that in a second. Now, for restoration purposes, would it be faster to restore two incrementals, a separate Monday and a separate Tuesday, than a combined Monday-Tuesday incremental? Well, it's that's a good question. Uh, if, so if you do larger deltas, you're going to have to copy more pages. So copying more pages takes more time. That's for sure. Uh, and then if uh, you have to scan more pages you're also going to uh, use more buffer pool and everything else and you can see it's taking less time uh, so let's see how long it took on the previous one which was a smaller amount of rows right yeah i, I was just remember the old linux dump command where they'd have you do the level zero dump on sunday a level three on monday a two on Tuesday and a one on Wednesday to kind of keep the incremental sizes down and then uh, build on that. So, so there's a power Hanoi process to restore things in the minimum number of tapes, but no one uses tapes except me anymore. <laughs> you can see, look, uh, our full backup was for gigs. The first one, which only had a, a handful of rows, right? Uh, it's less than one megabyte. And the second one, where I added a bunch of rows, right? Like I added a few thousand rows. Mm -hmm. It it became a few megabytes. So again, if, if I had combined it both, like this is really taking only the deltas. You, you can see it's effectively taking the deltas, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, as you take those deltas, uh, if you if if I would produce a backup on Tuesday, that will encompass both Monday and Tuesday is going to be a larger and, and every incremental is going to become larger. Okay. Um, it like as we're going to see now, there is a Haiti situation where how do we test this 
backups. Now we were super happy. You know, we were taking incremental backups. Everything was working okay. You know, it's Tuesday and we got backups until today. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, uh, we said we have to test the backups, right? Like how to, and to test the backups, we have to prepare. But you cannot prepare a backup. You cannot fully prepare a backup if you want to actually uh, be able to apply the incrementals. So if I go ahead and I do a prepare on this data deal, on, on this directory, I will not be able to later apply the deltas. I, I will be stuck with my uh, full backup, and this is going to be garbage. So that's why I um, created a backups testing directory where I will um, copy the uh, backup, <laughs> basically, so I can actually prepare the backup and actually uh, do the restore and test it. So it why is it painful? Because when you do the incrementals, you're going to have, like, let, let me show you the process, and it's going to be more telling than me bubbling. Uh, so I got testing. Again, I don't expect a single human to do this, right? I expect a script to do this, really. Don't, don't go there typing commands. Like, have someone sit down and write a script, spend some days of your week writing a script. It's going to save you time. It's going to think make things more reliable. And it's going to make this uh, make sense, right? Because this doesn't have any sense as we are now. Like, if I have to do all this manually, of course, nobody's going to do it. Um, so I go to my backup testing. I go to my full. I do extra backup. Deep compress. What you like. Mm -hmm. Oh, I might do something wrong. Sorry, <laughs> bad habits. Um, so the, here comes the pain. Like perhaps you don't compress your backups. Who cares? It, it's just a step. But the point is, you're gonna have to repeat the uh, decompress, uh, almost prepare. You're not going to fully prepare. You're going to almost prepare and then apply the incremental. And once you apply the incremental, do the full prepare and then test for that day. The next day, you're going to have to copy again, uncompress, almost prepare, apply the incremental, almost prepare again, and then apply the new incremental and then fully prepare and finally test. So you have to start from scratch. To actually test the incrementals, you have to uh, start the applying from the scratch because otherwise you have no way to test. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, so find. Uh, I will find the, the switch to delete the QPs automatically and forget about that. So uh, what I'm going to do now is set extra backup, uh, prepare, apply log only. Is it like that or is it just apply log only? Just let me take a quick look. Yes, like that. I never recall if it takes the prepare or, or if it just takes the apply log only. Accept the prepare, apply log only. Uh, target it equals bam. And I think that looks good. Completed. Okay. So 
I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do the same. Apply log only, target deer. And now I'm gonna say that it's, um, oops. So if I wanted to test this backup, I will have to remove, I will have to run again um, with, without the apply log only. What we do with this is we just apply the redo log, but not the rollbacks. So we can keep going forward and be consistent with the LSNs we have recorded. Um, so once we, if I remove this, it's also going to apply the rollbacks and we're not going to be able to apply more incrementals. So okay. you don't want to do that as long as you want to apply incrementals. That's the whole thing. Uh, backups. This. Actually, you don't have to copy nothing. Um, you can actually do this. The incremental is going to be, uh, you have to decompress first. But yeah, decompress. Target. Perhaps. Two, two, three, one. Watch your link. Oh, this is this is anything. Okay. I almost remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chip chip. There you go. Watch it right now. Okay. My blood and blood. This. There you go. Um, and now, uh, backups testing. I will do extra backup, prepare, apply, log only, and then um, target did. And I'm going to point to the full one. Target did is always full one. And then we do incremental p equals backups twenty twenty. Sorry, fake remote backups twenty twenty three. So the incremental is is gonna remain untouched. We're always gonna be working. Everything is gonna be applied on the full. What I already did the partial apply. So I already did apply only on this one. What I'm going to do now is apply only, and I'm going to apply this incremental, basically. That's what we're doing here. There you go. And um, so again, if I want to test, and, and here is the, the, the painful part, if I want to test, if the uh, on, on Monday, you know, when the incremental backup is done, if I wanted to test this incremental backup, I need to go ahead and do extra backup, prepare, target it equals uh, full. And I'm on the backup testing, right? So I'm going to be fully preparing the backup. And after I do this, I'm not going to be able to apply more incrementals. That's why I copied this to a backup testing folder. That's why I don't do it in the original copy. I make a copy so I can over and over apply other incrementals. I hope that makes sense to you. Oh, yeah. Well, we've been on for an hour and 15 minutes almost, so we should probably... <laughs> All right, we can wrap up about here. Um, just let me show you one last very quick okay. bit uh, that I'm not going to be able, again, to showcase entirely today. I'm going to stop sharing this screen, and I'm going to share 
another screen. Where are you? There it is. Chup, chup, window, window. So um, while you could go ahead and build yourself all the scripts you want, um, if you want something easy and that uh, can get you out of the uh, bad spot of not having backups somewhat automated, you could set up PMM. Um, then you could go to settings, go to advanced settings, and go to enable backup management. Um, once you enable backup management, you're going to have this uh, tool here, which I don't know what that icon means, but I guess it means go back to your backup. Um, and backup inventory, you're going to have, and, and here is the, the piece that failed for me today is uh, storage locations. It's going to have, uh, allow you to, right now it only support S3, right? So you will uh, use your S3 endpoint here. I, I was trying to use this one. Um, and, okay, whatever. Um, super, super key one. But sadly, uh, the, the location, th these guys is, uh, specs to give a location and I'm not able to enter it here. And without the location, it's not working for whatever reason. I think my uh, S3 server expects to have a uh, US West 1 or US East 2, whatever. So I couldn't get it to work, but this is what I would recommend, right? Just like uh, learn to use extra backup because it, it's what this will use in, in the backend. And learn to take manual logical backups, but try to automate it and try to rely on some professional grade product for your backups. Because, you know, it's what's going to get you out of the bad spot if your data ever goes bad. Uh, so a professional tool, uh, especially if it's free and open source like this one, it's a very good idea to, to have around. And with that, I will stop sharing and wrap up. Um, I hope that uh, was useful. Very useful, yeah. I'm not sure if we had any questions. What? No, there is no Windows version of Extra Backup. I see Sebastian was... Hola, Sebastian. Um, Again, uh, there is no Windows uh, alternative. I guess if you were running on Docker, like if you had Docker instances, you might get it to run. I never tested, to be honest. Um, we don't truly uh, have more than a handful of customers running Windows, and they all use uh, file system level snapshots or logical backups. And that works for them. All right, never, folks. You can never be too paranoid about your, the safety of your data. Well, oh, well thank you, Marcos, and thanks for everyone who uh, logged in and the folks who will watch this in the future. And uh, we will have more of these in these series. And uh, thank you all for coming in. So have a great day. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.